Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Good afternoon and welcome to the Chicago Philippine Reports TV, still the number one Filipino show in the Midwest. I'm Grady Pasqual. Welcome to our show. Today we have all the top stories from the Philippines. We also have what's happening in our own Filipino-American community of Chicago. We have interesting interviews led by our very own executive producer, Ms. Veronica Layton. We have Bridget Cotero Carino. All these are coming up and more. Afterward from our sponsors, please stay with us. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. A magnitude 9.1 earthquake on the eastern section of Japan in 2011 caused massive damage to the country. But perhaps one of the most lingering reminders of this tragedy is the Fukushima nuclear power plant which was not spared as tsunami swept through it. The meltdown of three of its reactors had to be cooled using water. More than 12 years since, the cooling continues, and the volume of water used for this has reached 1.3 million tons, or equivalent to 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Now, space to hold contaminated water is running out. This is why after undergoing treatment to remove most of the radioactive chemicals present, Japan has began disposal of the wastewater into the Pacific Ocean a move that's receiving backlash from neighboring countries. In South Korea, students stormed the Japanese embassy to protest Japan's action. Its prime minister calling for transparency from Tokyo. Our government hopes and urges the Japanese government to continue to transparently and responsibly disclose information throughout the process of discharge that will continue for the next 30 years. Beijing also denouncing the move as selfish and irresponsible. The Foreign Affairs Department of the Philippines says they will continue to monitor the issue using data and science, but other groups are not as keen. Fisher Folk Group Pamalakaya says the disposal of treated wastewater will inevitably reach Philippine waters and affect those who rely on it for livelihood. Lalong, lalong lalo na po sa panahon po ng amihan. Ang pinaka-vulnerable po na maapektuhan ay ang Philippine rice na kung saan ay mayroon po itong 13 million na hektareng dato po ay nagtataglay ano, ng napaka na iba't ibang klase ng yaman ng ating karagatan. Ang una pong maapektuhan dyan, hindi yung northern part ng ating uh, uh, kapuloan, yung uh, bahagi ng Cagayan. Nababahala po kami na, na posibleng magkaroon ng epekto yan doon sa ating mga marine animals. A scientist who worked in Japan and studied the events in Fukushima says the water that will be released will have negligible effects. But he admits exposure to extremely high levels of radioactive chemicals will have irreversible effects. 
pag na-expose ka naman ka sa radiation, it could damage the DNA and of course it could damage the fact it could affect the function of the cells. Pero nga dito, based on this uh, on their analysis, talagang this is very very much lower than the critical level. At least one expert calls for regular testing of seawater in the Philippines to monitor potential risks and he hopes Japan can extend assistance since the needed equipment is expensive. Yung nirelease sa tubig nila, pinest na po yan na ang International Atomic Energy Agency kasi nalinis na po yan. May tinatawag silang ALPS system to clean up. No? Nakita ko po yung ano yung tubig before cleaning up parang uh, kape parang parang dilute coffee okay. brown yung kulay The disposal of 1.3 million tons of treated wastewater will be spread out in a span of 30 years Ilalabas naman na uh, tubig yung volume nito versus yung volume mismo ng uh, dagat uh, sa Japan at sa Pacific Ocean ay napakalaki na uh, madadelete ito Experts say while Japan and other agencies have assured the safety of the wastewater being disposed in the world's biggest ocean, scientists should continue to monitor and assess the activity to ensure the safety of marine resources and the people who consume them. in the Philippines. Via Times, vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino-Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times, for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, Beauty, mysticism, bata corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773-866-0811. Magandang hapong po sa inyo lahat. Welcome to the Ronica segment of this show today. I have a very exciting young personality who will be talking to us about, oh my God, a very interesting topic. And uh, many of you there, out there, I think, you still remember what um, we're going to be talking about. And uh, help me welcome Miss Mylene Agana Howe Richardson. Um, and Mylene is the author of our very interesting book and she'll be in in that book this is her debut book too uh, her first time to write a book and it is uh, a memoir a memoir about her mom and her grandma and we many of us are still very familiar with these two people uh, that she wrote about and uh, you remember Tessie Agana? I, I'm one of her fans too, and uh, and Tessie Agana was uh, really a very popular child star. She was known as uh, Philippines' little sweetheart, and also the Shirley Temple of the Philippine cinema. Remember? All right, welcome, Mylene. Um, to our show, and Mylene is one of the nine big family, nine children of uh, Tessie and Rodolfo Howe. And these people, this couple, were uh, really very, very active in our community, um, mostly in the 80s and 90s. And, Welcome, welcome to this um, very, very pretty um, uh, oh. 
I mean, um, a, a child of Tessie and Rudy. And uh, she's one of the siblings among nine children. Wow, nine children. Nine children. Salamat po, Tita Veronica. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. And that beautiful introduction of my mother, you said it the best. She was the Shirley Temple of the Philippines. And that's just, it's still such a surreal thing to say, but um, that's what everybody has, has said about her. And I just loved, loved writing this book. And it, it actually wasn't supposed to be a book. A, it wasn't supposed to be the way the book ended up to be. It actually was just a passion project that started when my son was one years old. And when he was one back in 2009, um, I decided that, you know, family is so important in our, in, in, in everybody's world, right? Everybody has their own family history, their own culture, whether it's Filipino culture, whether it's Mexican culture, Spanish culture, but everybody has that, those family values. And I wanted him to see, to see it, to hear it, not from me because, you know, I'm just the mother. I wanted him to hear the unique stories of his grandmother, Tessia Ghana, and his great-grandmother, Linda Australia, my, my grandmother, in their own voices. So what I started doing is just, I bought a digital recorder and we would drive from Chicago, my son and I, Chapman, would drive from Chicago and go to Northwest Indiana and have these amazing conversations that we recorded. Chapman was just running around the room, playing with my grandmother's. It started, I started interviewing my grandmother first, started playing with his cell phone, her cell phone and little trinkets, rosaries around his, her room while we would have these interviews. And I just, I, you know, it still kind of chokes me up thinking about it. Those are the memories that I want him. I took many pictures and I want him to know that that was those moments are going to be so special for him. And that's really what was the impetus of this book is just writing these stories down for him in their voices, literally, figuratively in their voices. All and right. I loved Very every minute good. of it. That's a, that's a great story for a start and, uh, and a beautiful legacy that you've done. Thank you. For, not only for the family, but also for the community. Um, okay, so you started this project since when uh, your child was um, very one. young. Yes, he was one. So that was 2009. So, you know, he's going to be 16. <laughs> He'll be 16 in February. Wow, wow. I, I have a 16-year-old. It's crazy. I can Almost imagine the pride and you know and joy of knowing that he came from a, a very great uh, great family from the Philippines okay you mentioned uh, in our brief interview personally that uh, you went home to the Philippines with your family mm. yes. uh, has your mom uh, was uh, your mom is still alive, right? She is. She is. She lives five minutes away from us. Anna is still alive. Your mom, no, your grandma is gone, right? She and passed away in 2012. Yes. She's gone. But um, how is how is your mom doing in the first place? She's doing great. Um, you know, she's 81 years old now, and uh, she turned 81 this May, and she's um living with my sister, and she's overall fairly healthy <laughs> for you know for 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 an 81 year old she does have she has developed dementia since 2017 so it has been uh she has had um a decline in in the dementia over the course of the last few years but what is so wonderful is she may not remember my name right when i walk through that door she'll eventually remember it when I sing a song to her and she'll say, oh yes, you're my lead. She'll remember. Um, but when she sings, she still sings with gusto. You know? <laughs> she sings, oh, it's so cute. I mean, maybe it's not as strong as she once was, but music is, it, it lives and breathes within her. It's, it's her beat. Um, I always play 1950s music and old 
old Filipino songs whenever I'm watching her and I'm with her and she just comes to life. Um, but she, you know, she does have dementia, but she is just, she's, she's doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. I did actually let her know that I was speaking with you and she said to say hello. She remembered you. Really? Mia Thomas, she remembered you. She remembered you before she remembered my name that particular day. So it was, I, it was wonderful. She, Oh my she God, I, you know, I was just telling some friends that uh, I don't know what in me, but many of these uh, uh, old, older people who are suffering from dementia, when you mention my name, they remember me. <laughs> I don't know what's in there. <laughs> It was, you were such a part of Via Times and you, Tita Veronica, were such a part of our lives, like you said, in the 80s uh, and the 90s. And she she remembers, she remembers. So. Uh, have you tried showing her your book? Oh, yes. Yes, that's, that was. What was that reaction? Uh, so when I, finally, you see the book right here. When I gave her the book and she looked at the book and I she remembers that it, this is her. And she hugged the book. Oh it's God. the most beautiful thing. She hugged the book and she said, this is me. This is me. She couldn't, she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe it. And I've read every chapter to her, every revision. <laughs> I've, she has been a part of my step. Every, she's been a part of me every step of the way of this whole oh process. God. So I think she has read every revision. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm Dodge. Um, does she live with you? She lives with my sister. My sister lives five, her and her family live five minutes away. That was my requirement when we moved from Chicago to uh, to Arizona. I told my husband, I don't care where we are in Arizona. It just has to be five minutes away from my sister and my mom. And Which we're living four minutes year? and 55 seconds. Sorry? Your oldest sister? This is my older sister. I have two sisters and six brothers. And uh, my I'm number six. And the sister that lives here is number five. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's neat. Very close family. Very, very close family. What about the other siblings? Are they all um, uh, scattered all over? Oh, my. Yes, we are. I'll just go in order. It's probably the easiest for me to remember. So we're one of I'm one of nine. Our oldest, Marita, who you said you have met and we have met before in many you know previous occasions. Um, Marita's in Southern California with her family. My second brother, Radmar, is uh, the second oldest. Radmar is a priest, and he is also in Southern California. He's a Jesuit priest. Um, number three, Roger, is in Dallas, Texas. He used to live here in Arizona uh, when I moved here, but he got promoted and moved um, to Seattle and then got promoted again to Dallas. Let's see, that's three. Number four is Roderick. Roderick is still in Chicago area. He lives in South Elgin. So he's our, he's our, you know, our, our home base, if you would. He's the only one that's still back in, in Illinois. And I met, you see, also in entertainment? Is Roderick is in hotel, in the hotel industry. Oh, okay. Okay. Any of the siblings in entertainment business? Well, my brother Radmar used to be, the priest used to be, and my other brother, younger brother, Rodney, they both used to act in Hollywood. Oh. Um, so those two were the only ones that kind of dipped their toes into it. We all, I, it was, it was intimidating <laughs> for me personally, it would have been intimidating. Um, so we all kind of had our own paths, but then Thanks. I still have Thanks. other siblings that are all over the place, but we have also four or five, Michelle here in Arizona, yeah, I'm Michelle. here in Arizona. Yeah. My brother Jun is right after me. He's number seven. He's also in Southern California. So there's three in Southern California. My number eight, Rodney, is in Japan. So he married um, a lovely, lovely Japanese uh, lady and my sister-in-law, Noriko, and they have a little one in Japan. And then my youngest brother, Riddell, he's in Northern California. So we're all kind of <laughs> spread everywhere. Very interesting. Uh, well, I. And you just had a reunion, right? Uh, you just uh, celebrated a reunion, family reunion. We did. We did. We just had a very big reunion for my dad's side of the family, the house side. 
it was for my grandfather, so my dad's father, back in Illinois. And it was so wonderful. We haven't been back since 2019 with the pandemic. So my entire family went, um, all four of us. My sister, basically there were uh, six of the nine kids that were able to attend with our families, but then our extended first cousins, um, extended family, they were there. I think we had a total of maybe 83 total family members um, all within this weekend. And it was so, I, as I wrote in my blog, it was so good for the soul. It was, we haven't, some, some of the family members we haven't seen in quite a while. We had a a couple that were from the wow, Philippines. Wow, terrific. It was, it was amazing. It was just amazing. Really? Huge family, huh? Big okay. family, now, yes. You went home to the Philippines. Yes. Uh, some of your siblings last year to receive mm -hmm. the FAMA's Achievement Award for your mom. Uh, can you please tell us about that award and what does FAMA stand for? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I have the award right here, if you can see. It's the Filipino um, Academy of Movie Arts and Sciences. And it's equivalent to the American Oscars, if you will. And so she received the Lifetime Achievement Award. And it was, it was so unbelievable to be able to, first of all, take her, to be able to take her there live, uh, at this special, special occasion with the red carpet and everything. And we had about 13 family members also from the United States, some of my siblings and their children and, and spouse of my brother-in-law, my husband went. And it was just so remarkable to be able to not only be there, but to see, actually see the, the fans still love my mom. They, uh -huh. She was 80 years old at the time. She was signing autographs. It was so amazing. I didn't even know she knew how to sign her name still, to be completely frank. So she was just so alive and was always, she was in her element for sure. When she was around the people that, um, you know, her fans, our family relatives there, the Vera Perez family and Agana families, all of the family, it was a big family reunion. So it was, it was, uh, we were there for almost two weeks. And it was remarkable. It was remarkable to be able to not only see the fans still have her, um, she's still writing her own story is what I said. I thought I was done with her story. And when I stopped, I concluded my book last year happened and I had to write one more chapter because this woman is, she is still this remarkable woman that she, you know, that we all love and grew up with. Um, so it was, it was incredible. It was incredible. It was one wow. of those experiences that I think my children will never forget. They're waiting for the next time. They want us to go back out there. And my family out there is wondering when we can go out there. So hopefully soon, hopefully soon, we can maybe do a, a book tour out in the Philippines. We'll see. Were they all there? Your, or your children and your siblings were present? Not at my children, yes. So my I only have two boys. And both Chapman and Harris and my husband, Andy, we were all able to go. And um, some of my other siblings, not all of us were able to head out there, but my two sisters, so Marita and uh, her, uh, Marita was able to come, Michelle and her husband, Dino, and her three girls, and my brother, Jun, the one under uh, number seven, and his son. So we were all able to go. Are you planning to distribute the book in the Philippines and how? Oh, absolutely. Um, so I am working with the global distribution. And once we are able to, we're actually going to be, I'm going to be launching my pre-launch uh, orders very, very soon. I'm just waiting for the email to, to say yes. And that also includes Philippines, that includes international. Uh, so not only here in the United States and Canada, Europe, Philippines, for sure. Japan, of course, can't forget my brother, um, but it should be everywhere. Wow, yes. my Lynn, you're going to be an internationally renowned <laughs> author. Oh my gosh, we'll see. Thank you. And, okay. That wasn't my intent, though. My intent was just to let my sons know who their mother and their grandmother are, because there's also some chapters in there that are they are beautiful chapters, and then there's chapters that are real hard chapters to write as well. And so there's, there, it's a bit of an emotional roller coaster when I was writing it. 
And so there are some areas where not everything was great. And maybe there were some um, challenges along the way with my mother. And, you know, she had what everybody thought was this charmed facade of a, I say facade strategically, um, because it wasn't always like that on the outside. And every family, no matter what, how beautiful you look on the outside, there's always going to be some turmoil, something that is um, is going to challenge your, you and your life. And so we are no different. My mother is no different. And I think a lot of it also stemmed from how she was raised. As a child actor, um, there are you're raised in a very different light that we don't understand. And um, when when she was raised, she was she was constantly prodded at. She was constantly poked at, and everybody just wanted to be around my mother. And that had led to a lot of insecurities as an adult, really. Um, and so a lot of who she was, again, my theme is kind of who you are is how you were, where you were raised and how you grew up. And that's the same with my mother. And that's the same when I started unraveling and peeling back the layers of my mother and my grandmother, I started peeling back layers of myself, which I had no idea, I it wasn't my intent or my objective to do that, but I did. And it was very real and very in my face. And I thought, my goodness. So this is why my mother did what she did. And this is why. I am the way that I am. So there's, it, it was just a big, it was a revelation, this this book for me. Very therapeutic, frankly. Therapeutic, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. but, you know, amazingly, your mom was raised as a, a was she the only child? So she was raised, that's a great question. And I think a lot of people don't understand this, this. When she was acting as a child, she was an only child. They did have, and I wrote this in the book, The, the Legend of Tessia Ghana, that they did have, um, my grandmother had, grandparents had a child, but after 12 days, she died. Um, this was when my mom was two years old. So growing up, when she was in the public eye, she actually was the only child. And there were some times where um, my, my grandparents really wanted to have other children. They knew they wanted a house full of children, but my grandmother had a really challenging time medically and health wise. But my, um, my aunt, my auntie Mary Lou is, is uh, adopted. So she was adopted when um, my mom well, officially adopted when my mom was really 18 years old, but came um, came to the United States when she was, my mom was 18 and my aunt was already six. So they did adopt another um, young little baby that uh, there's a great chapter on how my grandparents adopted this baby or actually came to meet my aunt. Mary Lou, my Aunt Dudu is what we call her, her nickname. Of course, every Filipino has a nickname, right? <laughs> so Mary Lou is Dudu and uh, she's wonderful. So she does have a sister and she um, ha was married and has four kids. Fortunately, my uncle Dave passed away a couple of years ago, but has four kids and now is a grand grandmother to many oh. children. They have a growing family now too. They That's live in Valparaiso. She lives in Valparaiso still. Something else. Uh uh, coming from a, a solo or the only child, hmm. actually, yeah, uh, and uh, having uh, having ch uh, si nine children <laughs> in your life, but it's uh, really uh, I I would think uh, it's not going to be so quiet. There's a uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not quiet. It was never quiet growing up. Never. And it's, um, you know, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I loved our big family, love, continue to love our big family. We, we get together. I love the noise. I love it when my boys, I only have two kids, but when my boys play instruments and when they play, they play the drums, guitar, piano. I, I love it all. I never tell them to stop. Um, you know, I, they used to play drums at the same time. So I would have one, I, have two drum, I had two drum sets at one point. So I just absolutely love the music um, or love the noise. And it's in your blood and uh, <laughs> yes. uh, in entertainment is uh, really in your blood. Okay, yeah. so I'm not really surprised. 
and maybe one of, one of those uh, young kids will uh, turn out to be a movie star like your yeah. mom and your brother. They can do whatever they want to do as long as they put the effort into it is what I always say. So whatever it is, you just have to work hard at it. And so they're they're on the on a good path for sure. How about um your husband? Your husband is a Caucasian, right? You're married to a Caucasian. He is, yes, he is. And, and how does uh, how does he adapt to the Filipino culture? Um, from the very beginning, uh, he just immersed himself. My my Papa Rudy is my father, Rudy Howe. He loved to test him. Well, um, anything that was unique, kari kari. He loved to test Andy, and Andy was a champ. Immediately would eat the balut, whatever it took. My dad said, you have to drink it with a beer. So, of course, my husband loves his the balut. Loves it. Oh, oh, with balut. That was Papa. So Papa wow, and really? Andy ate balut together, toasted with the beer. I think it was a Miller Lite, probably. Um, so he really immersed himself. And he had grew up in, uh, in uh, the suburbs of, of Chicago and has one brother. So he, <laughs> this was all very, very new. Uh, the big family gatherings. It was it was hard. It was a challenge at first because I had so many gatherings when we were first dating. There was always somebody's birthday, somebody's death anniversary, somebody's communion. You know how we are. There's always <laughs> yeah, first communion. You have to go. I don't care if we're just the second cousin. We're still going. And so he grew to understand that Filipinos have a lot of functions and we just go we just go so he was always very very supportive of that thank you okay well where where can our viewing audience uh, buy your book so when the pre-order is going to be coming out any day now um my website is www.mylenerichardson.com so we'll have all of the information there i'm also all over social media, um, but that's all included in my website as well. And I'm also gonna be coming to Chicago. So I'm excited to come back home. Uh, the release will be coming out on officially on September 20th. So that Friday, September 22nd, I will be at the Rizal Center and the Modern Duque Association of Chicago USA is sponsoring that event. It is very near and dear to our family's hearts because my dad is from Modern Duque. He was very, very involved. My auntie Ching, my dad's sister, is um, very involved there as well. So she has graciously said um, that they would love to host something. So that will be at the Rizal Center on Friday, the 22nd. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm no. sorry. I've also... Um... I can hold of uh, some officers of the Philippine Medical Association oh, yes. uh, because your dad was uh, one of the founders and uh, active members uh, in the, on those years in the 90s, 80s and 90s. Yes. And um, they, um, I think, you know, the response will be in the positive. Uh, I have not heard any response yet, but uh, I... I will be interviewing the president tomorrow. I mean, uh, next week. Oh, that would be, I would uh, love to uh, be a part of that in uh, any shape. Um, okay. Mylene, uh, some advice to our viewing audience uh, regarding uh, your book. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, your experience as a writer, if there is a sequel and uh, a little bit of advice before we sign off. I would just say to all of those readers out there, thank you so much, first of all, but I encourage them to engage in those family discussions, engage in the family history, talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents, talk to your children, have a sit down because you'll see the connection with your own parents and grandparents and with your kids. And then you'll start to see a little bit more of yourself as well. Sometimes even among all of those complexities of family dynamics, I know they're not always perfect, but it is so important because time is all we have with them right now. And this is this is a gift. The time with your family is such a gift and just don't ever forget that. So experiencing 
all of that, remembering that now and gleaming, gleaning the wisdom from, from all of the, that your family can offer is, is what you can give to yourself and to your own family. Terrific, Miss. Miss Eileen, Mar uh, Mylene, sorry. That's Mar okay. In um, Agana, how Richardson, it's a long one. It's a it, long one. <laughs> it, she is a, well, fairly new uh, writer, uh, author of a memoir. And uh, I wonder if there will be a follow up and in this memoir. We shall see. We shall see. I have many, you know, I could write about every single one of my family members if they wanted me to, because there's always drama in any family, right? But then you have nine kids. There's always something. But right now, we're just going to revel in in Mama Tessie and just wow, honor her. Sure. And, and, the results are start in a way. And, uh, well, there will be follow-ups too most of the time. <laughs> okay. All right, Melin. Um Thank you so much for gracing our show today. And I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you, uh, the best for you. Congratulations as a new writer or author of the, the book entitled, the complete title of the book is actually The Legend of Tessie Agana, beloved, beloved child star of the Philippines, right? Is That's that the, the complete title? The, the complete book is Beloved, The Legend of Tessie Agana, Beloved Child Star of the Philippines, An Intimate Portrait of My Mother. All right. Portrait of My Mother. Wow. I love it. I love it. I know. I, I, I can't wait to receive a copy. Of and, course. Um, and, uh, well, it is going to be released when? September 20th. Wednesday, September 20th. And you will be here on the week? I will be here on, I will be there on Friday, September 22nd, will be the first event um, at the Rizal Center. And then working with, uh, collaborating with Sama Sama Project, the lovely, lovely Luella on Sunday, September 24th. And we will be at the Davenport Piano, uh, piano Bar in Chicago as well. So more yeah. details. I, on the website. I do. You're, you're going to be with uh, Lou Caballona. Yes. Lou used to be our uh, uh, our CPR TV and bio uh, She has right. let me know that. What a small, a small world, right? A small world in, in small Chicago. World. I'll be seeing her this coming Sunday for her cover. Yeah. Tell her uh, I said hello. Uh, Mylene, thank you so much. This is really a great interview and um, good luck and congratulations at maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood ako po si Veronica enjoy the rest of your weekend bye Mylene bye bye Tita Veronica thank you so much salamat po salamat do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now maybe 25,000 or more if you're a homeowner now is a perfect time to get cash out while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need 25,000, 50,000, or even 100,000, now's the time. Home values are up and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855-332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929. Welcome to Veronica's segment of your show today. I have a very interesting personality in theater, and um, he is uh, really, uh, actually, this guy is young and uh, very dynamic, and uh, he's actually based uh, in New York, but uh, his name is Robbie Simpson, and Robbie is the director of the Adams Family Musical at uh, 
at the uh, Metro Metropolis Performing Arts Center here in Arlington Heights. And uh, he's actually based uh, in New York as a director and actor. Look at that, so good looking. Hi, <laughs> welcome to our show, um, Robbie. And um, and uh, I hope you, you're liking Chicago uh, during this summer time. You, you do well, like I love it. Oh, I love being here. Um, and don't tell anyone back in New York, but I like Chicago in the summer, I think more than I like New York in the summer. So, so happy to be here now. And, uh, and I think I'll leave for January and February, but, but happy to be here for the summer. Yeah, Chicago is much better in the summertime than winter. <laughs> Have you been here winter during winter? I was here this past winter and uh, it got quite cold and windy and I'm, I must say, so. All right, well, wow, okay. Now, um, with what you're doing with the Adams family, I've been wondering because I've, um, you know, I'm familiar with the Adams family since when I was young and, uh, <clears throat> and it's, it's still been around. And I wonder what is the, the secret of this, uh, of, the, of this musical for the years uh, for you to span uh, uh, several generations. Yeah, absolutely. The Adams Family cartoons really first came out in the 40s. So we're talking like, uh, you know, 90 years ago. Uh, and they've remained popular because of the movies, of course, with Christina Ricci and Angelica Houston. And then uh, certainly had a surge with Netflix recent television show called Wednesday, uh, which is the number two uh, most popular English language show on Netflix. I think that it, it talks about a family who lives on the fringes, who is different, that doesn't conform to society. And I think now that we're in uh, such a world of social media, and this is how we should look, and this is how we should act, and being influenced by people, um, the Adams Family gives us permission to be kooky and different and weird and pursue our own interests and live authentically. And I think that that's a message that is universal. It's been around for forever and I think will continue to be. And so as long as there are stories about people wanting to be themselves, have different interests, uh, I think the Adams Family will be a very relevant story and, and certainly seems like that's its magical power. So... <clears throat> Well, you were not born yet when uh, uh, the Adams Family musical uh, got started, I'm sure. And um, and uh, now that uh, you have to direct the play itself, how do you feel about that? Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Um, we've been I've been doing a lot of research. It's it's part of uh, my directing process, and we also have a fantastic dramaturg uh, that's been working on the show with us that does a lot of that historical research of uh, how has the Adams family developed, how has it um, remained popular, what are the major themes that have appeared in the show or the cartoon or the movies over the years. So it's really a group effort because we also have a fantastic design and creative team team, music director, choreographer, all uh, doing their own research and, and coming in and collaborating together. So um, it's uh, it's a lot of information to digest, but uh, it's also interesting to look at all of that through the lens of 2023 and where we are collectively as a society and our interests and the things, the challenges that we're coming up against. So I kind of try to take all of that and then think about the audience that's going to come see the show this fall and, and what's relevant and important to them. As a director based in New York, how do you find uh, Chicago talents in your directing? Yes, uh, we had auditions um, uh, in the beginning of June, and Chicago outside of New York is a is a massive uh, theatrical hub where lots of new works are happening and spectacular musicals. So there is a, a vast talent pool here of actors. So we had many, many folks to, to pick from. Uh, we have a fantastic casting director, Robin Hughes, who it is their job to find all of these folks to come in and audition for us, and they come in and they sing and do a big dance call and uh, act out some scenes and read with each other. And then out of um, 
out of almost 500 people that submitted for the show, we uh, had a callback process with about 70 actors and then ended up uh, offering and casting about 20, 20 actors in this production that are top tier Chicago talent that um, are just as good as any Broadway show you're, you're going to go see in New York. Terrific. Okay. Uh, well, how about um, the the theater itself, the Metropo Met Metropolis? And uh, can you uh, please tell us um, about the theater itself? It's fairly new. It's fairly new, and uh, many people are not. Uh, I have, actually, as a matter of fact, I have not been there. Uh, I have not visited the theater. But um, it's uh, fairly new, but I heard that it's a very nice theater. And uh, can you talk to us about the Metropolis and also the uh, um, uh, what are the offerings uh, for the upcoming season? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you're very right. Metropolis has really only been producing for about 15 years now, uh, which is fairly new, especially in the Chicagoland area where we have so many historic, uh, massive theatrical institutions like the Goodman and Steppenwolf and Drury Lane and Marriott. Um, and I'd say only in the last five years has Metropolis really started to cement its reputation in the Chicago theater scene. And uh, especially in the past year, have the production values and qualities risen. And we've gotten a lot of attention from um, reviewers, newspapers, uh, television interviewers like yourself to really get the word out about Metropolis. The work that is being done there is so spectacular and the team and the people that are working there are just uh, so full of energy and, and inspired by all the work that we're able to do. So it's an exciting time to be a part of this theater uh, and to be at the helm of a production, which is the start of the 23 Three twenty four season. Uh, so we're kicking off with The Addams Family. Um, following The Addams Family is going to be a brand new production of A Christmas Carol, uh, but like you've never seen it before. Um, uh, very exciting, magical. It's a musical with a big cast uh, and spectacular set, which is being directed by the brand new artistic director, Brendan Reagan. Um, after that, uh, Metropolis is doing Nine to Five, which is the Dolly Parton musical uh, that had great success on Broadway with all of those fabulous Dolly Parton songs that you love, uh, of course, based on the movie. Um, and then following that is going to be Million Dollar Quartet, uh, which is a wildly popular musical that did play in Chicago for quite a while um, downtown. And so we're bringing it up to Arlington Heights uh, with all those fabulous songs of uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Elvis Presley. Uh, it's uh, one of those jukebox musicals that that just really makes you want to dance and makes you remember all those uh, nostalgic, fabulous songs of of the of the time. So uh, that's the season. I'm I'm very very excited about it, and I think it's an exciting time to come check out Metropolis and what we're doing over there. Terrific, uh, well, Robbie. Before we sign off, uh, kindly uh, invite our viewing audience to the uh, uh, Adams Family showing. Absolutely. Yes, please come out and see the Adams Family at the Metropolis Performing Arts Center. That is in Arlington Heights, uh, Illinois. It's uh, just about a 30 minute uh, drive outside the city, north of the city. Um, and uh, you're gonna be seeing a, and I really mean this, a high, caliber Broadway style production. And if you've seen the Adams Family before, I promise you haven't seen them like this. Uh, spectacular sets, dazzling costumes, fabulous lights, and some of the top Chicago talent uh, that we have here in the city. So we are just so excited to bring this performance to you, uh, which begins on uh, September 14th and runs for about three weeks. That's uh, if uh, we don't end up extending, which ticket sales have been uh, wildly popular. Um, also, this is a show for the whole family. I think that, um, oh, oh, um, Every age group will remember it, whether they watched the show when they were growing up 40, 50 years ago, or whether they just became a fan watching the Wednesday Netflix series. So you can come uh, without your kids. You can bring your kids. Uh, you're going to love it with uh, uh, spectacular big uh, pop songs as well. So uh, it's going to be an exciting evening.
Great. Thank you so much, Robbie, for gracing our show today. Mr. Robbie Simpson, director and actor from New York. And, and thank you for appearing our show, on our show today. At maraming maraming salamat. Maraming maraming salamat is thank you very much in our language. And we'll, we'll see you at the show, hopefully. Would love that. I would love that. Please, uh, please come check us out. At the media night. All right. Thank you. And bye now. Take care. We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East, from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain. And we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months and uh, we have a layaway system which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo! Good afternoon. This is Bridget Karina Quarter bringing you this week's local news from our community. With dangerously high levels of heat forecast across the state of Illinois in the coming days, including heat index forecasts in excess of 100 degrees, the Illinois Department of Public Health and other state agencies are warning Illinoisans to take preventative actions to avoid heat-related illness like heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Exposure to extreme heat can cause serious health complications, including heat exhaustion and heat stroke, said IDPH Director Dr. Samir Vora. With dangerously high temperatures and humidity in the forecast, I urge everyone to take precautions and protect themselves and their families from overheating and heat-related illnesses. This is especially important for very young children people who are pregnant, and those who are older or have chronic health conditions. Voters are concerned about excessive government spending, but issues such as inflation are more important in the run-up to 2024, the Center Square Voters Voice poll conducted by Noble Predictive Insights found that while 89% of voters are very or somewhat concerned about government spending, only 16% have it among their top three issues. Spending is less of a focus than inflation, 44%, crime and violence, 27%, illegal immigration and climate change, both 25%, economy and jobs, 23%, and abortion rights, 20%, according to a survey of 2,500 registered voters. In the coming days, students across Illinois will venture back into the classroom. That's why this month, the Illinois Emergency Management Agency and Office of Homeland Security, along with local emergency management agencies, are highlighting resources and tips to help students better prepare for their return to the classroom. Whether you have a new kindergartner or are a fifth year super senior in college, there are helpful resources available for students of all ages to keep them safe in the classroom throughout the school year. School safety includes being aware of on-campus hazards, but we also need to utilize the digital resources available to us, said Homeland Security Advisor to Governor J.B. Pritzker and IEMA OHS Director Alicia Tate Nadeau. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson says the city of Chicago has had conversations with suburban leaders in Cook and other counties about the possibility of moving migrants into their communities. However, some suburban leaders have voiced their concerns. Thousands of migrant families have arrived in Chicago over the past year. City officials have placed many in police stations, YMCA's, and Daly College. Keith Peckow, the Republican mayor of Orland Park, a Cook County suburb of more than 57,000 people, said that he is not on board with the idea. None of us have the resources for this. We do not have health departments. We do not have that kind of stuff, Pekau said. Governor J.B. Pritzker has called us a sanctuary state, right? Here's the deal. At the state level, the state has been ripping all the municipalities off by the local government distributed fund since prior to Pritzker. 
Many Illinois suburbs do not have the funds to take care of the migrants, he said. The Illinois Department of Natural Resources will recognize its 2023 Outstanding Volunteers of the Year and 2023 Natural Area Stewardship Grant awardees Saturday morning in Conservation World. IDNR annually recognizes individuals and members of outdoor organizations for their volunteer service to the department and its mission to manage, conserve, and protect Illinois' natural, recreational, and cultural resources. IDNR's Natural Area Stewardship Grant Program provides grants to conservation land trusts around the state to increase stewardship on dedicated Illinois nature preserves and registered land and water reserves. This year, IDNR will award nearly $750,000 in grants to 11 organizations. That's all for today. Thank you for watching our news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. And that's our show for today. Thank you all for watching Chicago Philippine Reports TV. We hope you will stay safe and enjoying this day with your family and friends. I'm Maria Gurley Pascual. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagsubaybay and we'll see you back here next week.